Are you a good friend? At first, you probably thought of the times you were there for your friend, maybe the things you did for him or her, or even gifts that you have given. But there is more to being a good friend than all these things. A major quality of a good friend is being willing to tell it straight. If your friend is caught up in a problem, oftentimes she needs you to come to her with a hard truth. If you are a good friend, you are going to be willing to tell it straight, even if you don't want to, even if it's uncomfortable, because that's a quality of a good friend. If we look for our friends to tell it straight, that's what I want to see in my friends, and that's the type of friend I want to be. How much more important isn't it that that would be a quality of the church? In this series, we see the church that God wants rather than the church that we might individually want. Perhaps people might want the church to tell them lies, tell them sweet little lies. But God wants the church to tell it straight. A church that tells it straight regarding sin. And a church that tells it straight regarding grace. This is what we see in the gospel for today. Jesus gives these instructions about the church that God wants. The church tells it straight. As we look into the gospel today, we see Jesus' instructions for confronting a fellow believer who is caught in sin. As we consider this text, we see the heart of our Savior, that Christ desires that we reach out to those who are straying away because of their sin. Christ desires that we come to them with God's law. Christ desires that we come to those who are repentant with the message of forgiveness. As we consider this text today, we can also dispel some false notions that people have regarding this section of Scripture, which has become known as the church discipline section of the Bible. Ultimately, we see the church God wants a church that tells it straight. Right away, we see that Jesus gives these instructions for reaching out to someone who is falling into sin and who is walking away from their Lord. And we need to note that Jesus isn't intending this to be just a formulaic presentation to the person. Step one, step two, step three. These are good steps for reaching out for a person, but this does not have to be every time. This isn't how it has to always happen. As we saw in the Galatians reading for today, Peter's public sin needed to be dealt with publicly. But Jesus shares these instructions for us. And what he's sharing with us is a prescription for persistently reaching out to our erring brothers and sisters in Christ. Jesus uses these conditional if-then statements. And what it demonstrates is that this person that is caught up in sin is demonstrating that this person has walked away from their Lord. So he's talking about reaching out to a person who in their sin is making you fear that that person is no longer a believer. Yet this doesn't mean we only confront people in sin if we think they've lost their faith. Because all sin is dangerous. All sin can be faith-destroying. So following Jesus' instructions, we desire to reach out to all of our brothers and sisters who are caught in sin, to be part of that church that tells it straight. Yes, this is a prescription that Jesus gives to confront sin. So his first step, if your brother sins against you, 
Now to note, this isn't just brothers and sisters who physically sin against you. If your brother or sister sins and you witness it, your brother is sinning against you. And that duty is on you to reach out to them, to reach out to that erring brother who is demonstrating a lack of faith in his or her actions. In this step, you are to go to them privately, just between the two of you, and to share God's law with that person. And there is a clear goal in mind. The clear goal in mind is to preach God's law so that it may do its work and lead this person to repentance. And then you can follow up by proclaiming the truth, the forgiveness that comes from Christ Jesus. Yes, the goal is to reconcile that person with you, to proclaim the message that reconciles them with God. Now, suppose this brother does not listen to you. Jesus provides a step two. Step two, take one or two others along with you. Jesus references a principle that is set forward in Deuteronomy 19, that every matter may be set by two or three witnesses. So as a group, you confront this individual who is caught up in sin. And the purpose of this isn't to gang up on that person. We all know you're a sinner. Of course not. This too is motivated by love so that the group witness of God's law can show that person the error of his way. And again, the goal of this is reconciliation and repentance. And if this person listens to you, that is good. And again, follow up, letting that person know about the forgiveness that is in Christ Jesus, his Lord. Now suppose this person doesn't listen to the witness of all three of you as you bring them God's law. Then it's time to step in with the third step and to bring it to the church. And remember, the church isn't the building. The church is the gathering of believers. So you bring it to fellow believers and there, the, the fellow believers who have been entrusted with God's ministry proclaim to this person the truth, the truth of God's law and the error of his ways. And if he doesn't listen to the church, then it's time to continue to fo step four. In the fourth step, Jesus tells you that if this person does not listen to the church and still refuses to repent of his sins, then you are to treat him as an unbeliever. Here Jesus says a pagan or a tax collector. You know, sometimes people can get really caught up in what exactly does that mean and start to go too far. Let's take it at face value. That person's sins has separated him from the church. That person's sin has separated him from Jesus. The truth is out there. Because of his actions, it is apparent. He is not a believer in Jesus, and the church needs to tell him the truth. This step is called excommunication. This is not always a popular topic. But this is the most loving thing that the church can do for that individual in the moment. How is excommunication an act of love? Because it is the ultimate preaching of the law to bring that person to see the truth by the work of the Holy Spirit, of his need for repentance, of the danger of his sins, and the state of his heart. This is what Jesus sets forward for his church to follow. The church that Jesus desires is a church that is serious about what it says, that tells it straight about law and gospel. And as he sends them forward, he gives them confidence. He gives them confidence because he is there with them. 
that when they work together, that when they pray together, when they gather together, when they exercise church discipline together, there he is with them. He is the one who is the power behind their words. And again, the power behind their words and the goal behind their words, because the church wants these people to be connected to Jesus, to know their sins are forgiven, but first they need to know they have sins that need to be forgiven. The church God wants is a church that tells it straight. Think again about being a good friend. How a good friend is willing to speak hard truths even when it's uncomfortable. Imagine you have a friend. Let's say his name is Mike. You and Mike have been buddies since high school. Uh, you've had a very close relationship, but it's often been very superficial. Recently, you've noticed some changes in Mike's actions. Mike has been going out to the bar a little bit more often than he used to. Mike is kind of being a little rude to those in his relationships. And you're seeing more empty bottles around the house. Now you're, the rumor mill is churning and you're hearing these things about Mike. You're hearing that his performance at work is slipping. And you're hearing about some tension in his marriage. You have your fears that alcohol is a demon in Mike's life. So what do you do as a friend? Well, here's option number one. I don't want Mike to think I'm rude. I don't want him to be mad, and I don't want him to push me out of my life. So I'm not going to say anything to Mike. Let's just let bygones be bygones, and there will be no tension. What could happen? Potential result of this first option? Mike has been drinking throughout the day, and now Mike gets behind the wheel of a car, and he hits another person, killing the family in that car. Now you are overcome with shame because of your failure to say anything to Mike. A broken relationship with him would have been better than this, right? Option number two. You confront Mike about your concerns over his actions and what's going on. And you share with him the error of his way. What could happen from this response? Well, first potential result, Mike gets mad at you. Mike says, I don't want to hear from you again. You don't know my life and you don't know my problems. And after some time of not interacting with Mike, that same car accident happens. Potential result number two. When you confront Mike because of his sins, he repents to you, and he confides in you the, the reason behind what he is doing. And you're able to be there with Mike through this process and to help him get help. We understand the importance of telling it straight in our relationships. Being a good friend means we're willing to bring hard truth to that individual And that is what God has called his church to do. The church tells it straight. Now, people don't always want the church to tell it straight, especially when it comes to sins that are near and dear to our hearts, or relationships, at least, that are. The classic example can be the live-in situation. When a man and woman are living together before marriage. People don't want to hear the truth. That, that action is a demonstration of unbelief. 
And that sin has separated them from their Lord. Sadly, not only the couple doesn't want to hear the truth, but often now the parents and relatives don't want to hear the truth either. Can we fall into this desire of the church just telling sweet little lies by ignoring sin or by the leadership and pastors just accepting the convenient excuses behind the, ex the actions that are committed? There is another side to it as well. Sometimes people don't want the church to tell the truth regarding forgiveness. Tell me I'm forgiven, but how is he? How is she forgiven? Do you know what they did? Perhaps people can be guilty and not wanting the church to tell it straight regarding law and gospel. If we have fallen into desiring that the church tells sweet little lies, then we must confess this sin too. Thank God that the church tells it straight. That the Lord has sent his ministers to tell it straight regarding law and gospel. That he has sent people to us to tell us the error of our ways. To preach the law to kill. And that he has sent ministers to preach the gospel which promises to life. The gospel about Christ Jesus who lived, died, and rose for us. Just as that person who is guilty of sin needs to hear the law to convict and hear the gospel of forgiveness, we too need this message and thank God he has sent it to us so we can have confidence in Jesus that all of our sins are forgiven, that we will be with him forever in paradise because he has sent messengers to us to tell it straight about sin and grace. The church God wants is a church that is willing to speak hard truth, to proclaim the law where it needs to be heard, and to proclaim forgiveness where it needs to be heard as well. A church that tells it straight about law and gospel, sin and grace. Amen.